of that Lord Farquaad. <laughs> Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Um, Speaking of Farquaad, dude, Farquaad, you need to watch Shrek the Musical on Netflix. Oh, it's on my list. I love it. It is so good. Uh, it's on Netflix. Um, I love musicals, though, so it's. I guess it's. it's the... Since I'm half gay, it's just uh, that's the half or something. I don't know, but uh, I can't wait to see the um, the Beetlejuice musical. I've I've been listening to the soundtrack over and over and over, but I want to see the actual musical. I haven't got to see Wicked yet. I want to see Wicked, and uh, that's really good. The Book of Mormon is hilarious. I saw a recording from Broadway of that somebody did illegally, but it was really funny. They have a song. Oh, uh, no, go ahead. Here, you know what? Go ahead and start us off on the show. This might be, we can start talking about musicals. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was like, this is just the, the prelude into the, the intro, but uh, greetings, Slashaholics, and welcome to another episode of Out After the Slash, uh, episode question mark. I, I don't even remember what we're on at this point. You're getting close uh, to 50. That's all I know. Is that with or without the missing first episode? Uh, without. Okay. Okay. All right, but uh, yeah, musicals. Yeah, musicals. We were talking about Shrek. The musical is actually a lot of fun. Uh, I was saying I, I haven't got to see Wicked. I want to see it, but I was going to tell you about the Book of Mormon. I, it's been a couple years ago. I watched like it was on YouTube. Even it's not there anymore. That got taken down. But somebody had actually just recorded it from watching it, and my phone's going off while I'm trying to do a podcast it's the fbi they, they know where you are oh my god it actually is no um it's have you seen the book of mormon yet no i know about it i haven't seen it it's so it's hilarious they fought this war the, the the show the show begins with the song about like the uh elder pete elder young and all that like it's like all the different <laughs> uh, it's the different people going door to door trying to tell people about God. Like, hello, it's me. My name is Elder Young or something. And uh, anyways, they end up in, getting sent to like Africa and they have to go against this warlord down there. And uh, a bunch of sh- crazy shit happens. And then the, at the end of the end of the play, it's a prelude. Uh, is it prelude to the first song of the play? Is that what you call a prelude? I think so. Anyways. Uh, they do a, a re a redo of the song, but it's you know, and uh, the the stage goes black, and when it comes on, the warlord's standing there, and he's been converted. He's like, "Hello, my name is Elder Warlord." <laughs> he's like, "In the it's it's Trey Parker and Matt Stone did great with it." The version I saw, Josh Gad was the star of it. I don't know, I don't know who was in the cast if it's still, you know, on tour. But uh, it was really good. I would love to see a movie version of it. I'd like to see Clue turned into a musical uh, from the eight, the movie Clue from the eighties. Yeah, that that script, but a musical. Uh, they're already redoing Little House of Horror, Little Shop of Horrors, which I'm not too excited about that because you just can't beat. Okay, oh, wait, if they bring back Rick Moranis to at least play the dentist or something, I'll be okay with it. Speaking of musicals, you know how Wicked is the story of the what? I said, or he, or he could play the shop owner since he's like in his sixties. But yeah, I don't think he's mean enough to play the dentist. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, you know how Wicked is the story of the Wicked Witch of the West, and it's from her perspective and how she's really misunderstood. Somebody came up with the idea to do that for Jafar instead of Wicked. It was called Twisted. Because, like, his beard. And it was like, he's a really smart advisor, and the Sultan just doesn't give a shit about anybody. There's just crime that's rampant through Agrabah, and Jafar is trying to get the lamp because he wants to take over the Sultan's position. But there's this streetwise hustler named Aladdin that's <laughs> it's, oh it's able to steal the Aladdin. He steals the lamp with the wisecracking genie, and Jafar's like, I need that lamp. I'm trying to solve poverty. I'm trying Aww. to uh, Jasmine is like this ditzy princess that's always on her phone because she doesn't know anything about the outside. She, she she falls in love with Aladdin and he's Jafar's like, I just want to fix everything. What's this called? Is this is it's called, this gonna twi- be, it's called twisted? Is it gonna be a real thing? 
I, I could have sworn somebody did a production of it and put it on YouTube, but like there was like a four minute ballad called Fuck Jafar. Oh my and God. it just it wasn't near as funny as it sounded like on paper. Uh, but I didn't watch all of it. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't watch all of it. I just kind of like skipped around a little bit, but the, the concept makes me laugh. You know, that's like somebody saying, uh, and you've got me excited. I want to see that now. But like, I, you know, you said it sounded better on paper. That's like somebody saying it reads better from someone's lips. No, you're not following me there. Not really. I feel like I'm being insulted, but I can't quite pinpoint no, where no, I'm being no, insulted. No, I'm not insulting you. <laughs> I'm insulting like how we just say that phrase. We all do. I say it all the time. It sounded. Yeah. It sounds. It sounds good on paper. That's like saying it yeah. reads good from someone's mouth. Oh, I see. I see. I get it. Yeah. I don't know for some reason I was. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna kick your ass. I don't know why. No, if I'm um, wasting you, I'll, I'll. I'll let you know. But. Okay, we got we got to have our um, our episode Dark Tower talk. Did you see the trailer for the audio drama? No, there's going to be an audio drama. It blew my mind. It's all it is. Okay, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't finished Dark Tower. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. I'm not going to try not to spoil too much, but I want to. Wait, wait, wouldn't that be like saying spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't started reading The Gunslinger? What? Saying spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't finished The Dark Tower? Isn't that the same as saying spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't read the first paragraph of The Gunslinger? Oh, man, that was was dirty. Um, But the trailer, it's a really simplistic trailer. It's images of all the locations from all the books, and it's Roland's speech at the end of Dark Tower 7. And it's a guy like delivering it with so much passion as you go through um, the, the, the mountain caves with the mutants, the, the beach with the lobstrosities, uh, the town of blood. It goes through all of that, and when the speech ends, it's like Dark Tower audio drama coming spring 2022. And I'm just like everyone's just clapping like this is better than the entire movie and this was just a trailer i want to see that the thing i hate about the movie is how it's just a sequel to the books you know yeah. uh and it's not it's not an actual movie uh it's not a movie representation of the books um but no yeah. obstrosities no oi nothing I, i'm curious though i'm so the voice of the dark tower for me is the guy that narrated uh one through four Frank Muller. Frank Muller, yes. The guy that did 5, 6, and 7 was okay, don't get me wrong. But the yeah. voice of Roland will always be Frank Muller to me. Uh, the voice of all of them. Although I think Aaron yeah, but... Ball would make an amazing Eddie. Uh, they're yeah. stupid if they don't get him to voice him for the audio drama. Because um, I think I think Aaron Paul would be... I think he is Eddie. Any t- like whenever I uh, did my last listen of the books... That's all I could picture was Aaron Paul as Eddie this time. Featuring uh, George Clooney as Oi. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they like, they, don't, they, they try to get Mel Gibson, uh, but he had retired from dog voice work after his work on South Park. So <laughs> yeah. he voiced a dog that just barked back in the early seasons. Literally that he was, he was on there voicing it like barking and that was it. So Somebody on YouTube, I just found this, um, they made a fan soundtrack for the Dark Tower series because they're musicians and they're like, here's how we think this book would sound. Here's how we think this would sound. To me, my favorite track is the one for Blame the Mono because it's guitars and it starts out kind of quiet, then it gets faster and faster and louder and louder and faster and faster like 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 a train picking up speed until it gets like out of control and that's when the guitars are really out of control in the music and to me i just it's it's my favorite on that and um do you remember in the town of wood how they kept hearing the drums and eddie was like wait a minute that's a zz top song that's that's velcro fly they did they isolated the vocals so it's just the drums and like a, a a repeating arc for like five minutes and it's called wood 
That's the track on the soundtrack. How did we get to Dark Tower? Oh, I have a list of random bullshit that I'm going to talk about. I don't know. What what did we segue into, though? Because I was going to say something. Uh, We're talking about musicals, and then I said, you know, the audio drama of Dark Tower is coming out. Oh, okay. That that didn't that didn't trigger it. If I remember, I'll say it. But I'm because we had last talked about the Jafar twisted thing. Oh yeah, I mean, I was going to say in Aladdin the remake, the one thing I really hated about it, other than they had like 200 plus hours of dialogue from Robin Williams that they could have recycled and like did a CG genie. Like they had, they had the dialogue from the movie and they had hundreds of hours of him and other people from the uh, animated movie, uh, unused dialogue, him just doing takes and takes with different words and, you know, different jokes and stuff. And I feel like they could have like made a dedication. I feel like his family would have been okay with it too. Uh, to make the genie like Robin Williams, and you, they could have used all that dialogue to fill in the gaps of anything they wanted to do with the script. Uh, but Will Smith, he did the best he could. But what I hated about the movie is the thing that I always thought was so badass about Aladdin the cartoon was Jafar is the first. I may I may have talked about this before on the show, but I'm going to say it again. Yeah. <laughs> Jafar is, he's got this bad, he's like the most badass ever villain because he uses the hero song against him. You know, he re-sings the hero song and then bitch slaps him, you know, and instead they bitch slapped us and made Jafar like this little pouty wine bag idiot uh, in in the live action. So I'm curious to see this musical. Uh, I'm going to look it up, Twisted. And I'm gonna also yeah. have to watch. It used the to the full the full thing used to be on YouTube. I don't I don't know if it is anymore. Well, I'll definitely watch the uh, the trailer. There's been so much going on. Um, I'll well, say- I can't. I, I I just looked on YouTube. I can't find it anymore. I, I found it on Instagram. I've just been sharing all the people on Instagram. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to share it. But I did just watch uh, two nights ago or three nights ago the final trailer for Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I wanted to talk about that for a second because we get a lot more of the backstory on Ghostbusters. Uh, you, you hear the little girl, uh, Egon's granddaughter, talking to Ray on the phone uh, about and that, saying she needs to talk about what happened with Gozer. And then at the end, they actually played the Ghostbuster music finally for the first time in the trailers. The, the song started, and you see... From the like here down, Ray, Peter, and Winston, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, in the jumpsuits, pointing the proton packs, and uh, they're talking to Gozer, I presume, because he's back. And you hear Bill Murray as Peter, and and Bill Murray, like whenever he did Ghostbusters the video game back in '09. He kind of phoned it in. It sounded like Bill Murray. It didn't sound like Peter Bankman. You know what I mean? Uh, like he was in the movies. And in the, this final trailer, you hear him say, hey, did you miss us? And it sounded just like he hadn't missed a beat. Like that was like nostalgia fuel like I've never felt or seen in my life. I'll put it this way. The trailer for that, that final trailer's video on YouTube. Uh, I remember when Ghostbusters 2016's final trailer came out. That thing was like neck and neck with down boats and up boats, like thumbs up and thumbs down. I think it had like uh, 80K thumbs up, but like 72K thumbs down. This one with like millions of views had like 100 and something K thumbs up and only like 200 thumbs down. Uh, I feel like this one is going to really hit the mark. Uh, This is going to be a shot in the arm for the franchise. I'm excited about it. That was kind of like me when I saw the uh, Doctor Sleep. Ooh, yeah, great. Movie. And when he's like, when they're when they're gonna head to the hotel, and it does the opening credits music of the original Shining, and then ends up at the hotel. To me, I, I was jumping up and down in my seat. I was like, Oh my god, look at that! And Sophia's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> she's she's not really a big fan of the original. She likes the uh, 1997 miniseries one, which I, like, I do really like good. Movie. I do like the miniseries. But uh, I love the cinematography of the original one, even though Jack Nicholson was like a fucking misogynistic fuck. 
Stanley, <laughs> Stanley kind of pissed me off because I the, him throwing away uh, Stephen King's draft and the screenplay and stuff. But you know, it's his own vision. He took a story by Stephen King, made it his own. At least it was a lot like the story, not like Lawnmower Man <laughs> that had nothing to do with the actual Stephen King short. Story. You always be the Lawnmower Man, Joe, right? Um, My favorite line of the. Two movies. God, those movies are so bad. The first one's pretty cool. I like the first one. It doesn't hold up. I, I, I still, I still love them. I don't know what to say. They're, they're not that great, but uh, I love them for some reason. The second one with Matt Frewer is a little eh, but the first one is a lot of fun. And uh, Jeff Fahey is that his name? He does a really good job in the first one. Yeah, he was good uh, in Psycho Three as the bad guy. Dude, did you see that leaked uh, picture of the three Spider-Men together from Spider-Man uh, No Way Home? There's so many fakes out there. It's hard to tell what's real and what's not. I think this one's real because I think it didn't look like it was CG'd or Photoshopped. It, the, the ages were right. Uh, it looks like there's going to be Tobey Maguire, uh, Garfield, Andrew Garfield and him uh, fighting together at some point. And I know for a fact Willem Dafoe is going to be in the movie. Um, so I'm really looking for. I'm wondering if James Franco is going to make an appearance since his dad's going to in the movie. So, but, so. You know, I, I know they did the CGI <laughs> to make Dr. Octopus look the way he did in Spider-Man 2. But I, I'll, I'll admit, and I know this doesn't make a lot of sense, I was kind of hoping to see Alfred Molina as an older grizzle. Yeah. Like... Dr. Octopus with, like, gray, and he has maybe some scar tissue, and his back is just, like, completely fucked up from, like, years of carrying these arms, like, I would, or, um, did you, did you read the comics, uh, The Superior Spider-Man? Sorry, no. That's where Dr. Octopus is dying of cancer, and his last act on Earth is gonna be to solve global warming. But Spider-Man's like, he doesn't believe it, but everyone's like, give him a chance. He's dying. Like, we have proof he's dying. Like, there's no doubt about it. He will not see the next year. But Spider-Man's like, he's going to do something really, really bad. And you you eventually, you know, spoiler alert, you find out that he's so pissed. He's just gonna, He wants to take the world with him. He, he's going to overheat the machines, and he's going to destroy the Earth with himself. But before he does it, he finds a way to switch minds with Peter Parker. So <laughs> Peter is in the dying Dr. Octopus body in like the maximum security hooked up to all these life support machines while Dr. Octopus is in the healthy Spider-Man body. Small but Spider-Man season four, I think, uh, when Lionel switches with Clark because Lionel's got the liver disease and shit. He's dying. They probably stole that from the comic you're talking about. Maybe, but like since his body is so wrecked, He's kind of in this, like, for lack of a better term, almost like a sarcophagus, and all the arms are doing everything for him, like moving him around, making phone calls. Like, I mean, he's, he's using all the wires in the arms to, like, contact the Sinister Six to break himself out so he could take Spider-Man and switch the minds back. But really, really interesting. I guess the point of this whole conversation was it would have been interesting to see, like, a dying Dr. Octopus, like, especially because Alfred, he's older, like, all that CGI they did to make him look younger was unnecessary. I would have been happy just to see him as him. Like, I wonder if Toby is going to be de-aged and stuff. I don't know. He didn't look de-aged that much in the picture, but uh, I will say I, I've, I'm, I'm lazy to the party. I've got so much stuff. I'm more of a DC guy, but I do like some Marvel stuff. Um, for one, here in a second, don't let me forget, please. I want to talk about Michael Keaton and the Flash movie coming up. But uh, my, I had not seen, um, oh my God, I can't even think of the names. I'm, I'm getting old and all these gray hairs are sapping my brain energy. Uh, Carnage. Um, it just came out. Part two came out. There will yeah. be Carnage. What? Venom. Uh, I hadn't yeah. seen Venom one yet, but my kids wanted to see the new one. So I was like, okay, we'll go see it. I know a little bit about Venom and stuff. Uh, I've seen Spider-Man 3. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's not a very good representation of Venom. Um, I got to say, I haven't... Neither was this movie. Huh? Neither was this movie. Ven- uh, Carnage, uh, Venom, let, uh, There Will Be Carnage. I was really disappointed. Okay. It wasn't the best movie ever. It was very predictable. 
And there were some what the fuck moments like, wait, the bad girl, the whole movie is like killing all these cops. And, and all of a sudden at the end of the movie, when it's convenient to the plot, she all of a sudden has a change of heart and wants to help the good guys. It's like, it doesn't make, it makes no sense. The only part I liked that is my new favorite superhero movie scene for now is the ending spoiler alert in three, two, one. Um, when carnage fucking Woody Harrelson's like, all I really wanted was a friend maybe, you know? And then fucking Venom uh, dudes like, Oh, too bad. <laughs> he said, fuck this guy. And just- <laughs> yeah. He's like, and Venom's like, Oh, fuck this guy. And just bites his fucking head off. New favorite scene, uh, not my favorite movie, but uh, definitely that was a great scene. So, <clears throat> getting over a chest cold. Sorry. Yeah, the only thing I've really been watching lately is that um, I finally watched all thirty six live action and anime Godzillas. Now I'm working on the forty episode cartoon spin off of the nineteen ninety eight Matthew Broderick Godzilla. That cartoon's actually really good. I it it's good, but it is all over the place. Like he was fighting a monster that was a manifestation of someone's dreams. I'm like, have y'all seen a Godzilla? That is really off. What'd, That's, you, uh, what'd you think of uh Shin Godzilla? Shin Godzilla is the scariest goddamn Godzilla out of all of them, except maybe the original. Like I keep I keep re-watching the scene where he uses the atomic breath for the first time and it's it's less of him destroying the city and more like he's vomiting the the flames and the plasma yeah. and the radiation out of his mouth i mean this this you can tell he is visibly in pain and visibly cannot control the onslaught of everything coming out of him like a cracked nuclear reactor and just it's a horrifying scene as he takes out like an entire town county and just in pain the entire time i'm still gonna watch the anime movie trilogy i just finished it it is it's really good but keep an open mind were they able to destroy the mega super godzilla thing in the end or did they have to leave the planet again three two one you really want to know the answer to that yeah i'm still gonna watch it regardless but did they find a way to defeat him no Okay. I didn't think they would, because he's like the old well, Godzilla. Th- yeah, like, because Godzilla can't be killed. He's a force of nature. Like, he even asked one of the natives, he goes, do you hate Godzilla? And she goes, hate? Would I hate a hurricane? Would I hate an earthquake? He just is. We don't kill that. That, But they bring Ghidorah in, in a really interesting way. Like, I'm, okay. I, I, they really try, like, a sci-fi futuristic way to bring some of these characters back Me- um, mecca is in the second one but it's not exactly the mecca that's in the movies they they really try the nanites and the art the ai to really try something different oh, there so. i loved godzilla versus kong like it, i know it was just like a it was action porn but and there's a lot of stuff that didn't make sense like how the hell did he get down from the top of king kong after landing the ship on him to jump his heart but I love the fight with Mecha Godzilla. Uh, I just I just love the whole movie. Godzilla versus Kong. It it didn't make a lot of sense compared to the other two, but it could have stood on its own because it's not about the fucking journey. It's not about the the fucking shit you're trying to figure out. It's just about the story of Godzilla and Kong, and then them coming together and. Their little nod to each other was really badass at the end, you know? Because, I mean, these things might be monsters and creatures, but look how fucking big they are. They got huge brains, right? So they're probably more intelligent than people give them credit for. And the little nods to each other, the little mutual respect after that fight was was pretty cool. It's funny you say that because in the Godzilla vs. Kong 1962 there's some smug scientist that was like, Godzilla's a dinosaur, he's got a pea brain, and he doesn't have much intelligence. <laughs> so in the in the sequel to that, which was or that was that was Godzilla number three, and the original Godzilla number five, when they're fighting Ghidorah, Mothra has to communicate, 
to Godzilla, and Godzilla is like, humanity has spoiled the Earth, and they don't deserve to rule this planet, and I'm going to pass judgment upon them. And I'm like, pea brain, huh? Exactly. Some smug, right? some smug American scientist, eh, he's just a dinosaur. Well, I will tell you, I watched the first episode of the final season of Dexter. And to any Dexter fans, uh, if you didn't enjoy the way Dexter ended, you should really give this series a go. Uh, just the stuff that went down just in the first episode is setting it up to be a wild ride for the final season. And they're not spending a bunch of time to tell you what he's been up to, how he went from being a lumberjack to where he is now. It is picking up where he is now. And it's really interesting. It's really good. The writers and showrunners from Dexter seasons one through four are doing this final season uh, special event, 10 episodes. And they're the ones that, you know, handled everything up to the Trinity story. Uh, they had a vision and they say the ending will blow your mind. And I can kind of see that coming. Uh, some, I don't want to ruin any of it. If you like Dexter, get Showtime. If you don't want to get like Showtime full price, go to Amazon. I think it's like 10 bucks to get the add on and uh, watch it every Sunday. If you have it on Showtime, the Showtime uh, streaming, like on Amazon, you get it early in the day uh, before it airs on Showtime. Definitely worth the watch. And I wanted to say I am super excited that Michael Keaton is coming back to play Batman in the Flash movie and probably a couple other movies after that. And uh, it's not just going to be him, you know, as Bruce Wayne. He's going to have the suit on at one point. Um, I'm wondering if he's going to have the exo suit like in Kingdom Come. Um, uh, it's going to be fun to see. But the, it, it even shows the Batmobile from the 89 Batman under its heart. So we're going to see it in the movie. It's going to be wicked. I'm excited. What do you think of that? Dexter and the Batman thing. <clears throat> well, I quit Dexter after season five because I just, you know, stopped caring and this new season i mean i'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with it i just i don't know if i'm going to be a part of it uh yeah, that's the thing if you enjoy, if you if you quit enjoying it around season five this is the perfect thing for you because that the these guys are the showrunners from one through four and they want to give people that enjoyed those early seasons but didn't enjoy the later seasons a proper send-off for a show that they once loved that's their whole goal so the dexter hurt me so I went to Hannibal. Hannibal made everything better. Uh, I don't know if I, I just don't know if I could be hurt again, you know? But it, uh, I'm pretty sure Dexter's going to die. I think the whole point of this is it's going to end with his death. Uh, I have a theory that maybe Harrison will come back and kill him uh, since he, you know, uh, or what would be really cool is if Dexter, I don't want to give anything away. But Dexter did is does kill again. He hadn't killed in years. He kills again. He doesn't have an ocean where he's at, but there's a frozen lake. So chop up the body parts, put them in the lake. I have this fun theory that maybe there's like this murder investigation going on. Eventually they find the chopped up remains and they link it to the Bay Harbor butcher. So he's going to have to, and, and they arrest him and he's going to have to get extradited to Miami where the case is. So how cool would it be in the final episode that like Batista and Quinn show up to arrest him and take him back to Miami. Uh, you know, and the show ends with him like on the, uh, uh, getting the lethal injection. And like, he looks over and every murder, everybody he's murdered and stuff is like watching. That would be kind of neat. Yeah. But uh, Batman, man, I wanted to get your thought on Batman before uh, you run through your list of things. Cause that's all I had. I don't know, man. I got my hopes up, but then Kevin Conroy was Batman and that one Flashpoint thing on TV, and that went fucking nowhere. Uh, that was really cool, and it had no payoff, so I'm and they fuck small worried. That. I'm worried that's going to happen again. I just, I don't know. DC, I just, I'm getting to the point where I don't want to give them money anymore until they release some quality material or at least something I'm interested in. Smallville is um, going to do an animated uh, continuation with Tom Welling, Michael Rosenbaum making it, and the cast, all except for Alice and Mac, uh, coming back to voice their characters. Yeah. Yep. So what do you have? What do you have listed, buddy? 
That was pretty much it. Uh, Godzilla, Dark Tower, <laughs> etc. No, I saw more on there. Hit me with your best shot. Oh, these are actually my work notes. Uh, when I'm bored at work, I scribble down what I'm going to talk about on this show, because right here I have uh, the number of clamps I need for the roof. Uh, I'm, sure that's impo- I'm sure that's important. Right here is 55. People are dying. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> we, got, we got to do this sooner uh, on the next one. I'm trying to get a hold of the author of Death Moon. I'm trying so hard. I've got Nancy Kilpatrick uh, even reaching out for me and trying to help. Uh, and she's friends with him. So fingers crossed. I hope the guy understands. Uh, just because we don't like his book doesn't mean we don't respect him for taking the time to actually write something that got itself a forever part of the Jason canon. Uh, I'd love to talk to him, even though we're so critical of the book. It'd be fun to hear uh, stories about that from him. Um, even so. even if um, even if he does say something, we need to incorporate it into the channel. I think there was an episode of American Dad where there was like it was a dojo, but it was called Dojo Biden, and he was <laughs> like, in the fam- in the famous words of Joe Biden, "You cannot use my name for your dojo." <laughs> <laughs> right. So if we fly, if we finally find the author, it'll be like in the famous words of the author, "Don't interview me or use my words for your channel." That'd be the new name of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. If you don't have anything else, any unpopular horror opinion or what the fuck horror? I I do I do have an accolade. Um, my friend and I we we watch horror movies every Wednesday. And right now we're working our way up the uni- the classic Universal monster movies, but we're doing the Mummy. So we're starting with the 1932 Boris Karloff one, and moving on from there. And for those of you that don't know, um, the original 1932 Mummy it did feature Imhotep and you know trying to resurrect his bride and him regenerating. But he kill he he's not really a mummy for the movie. He he kills people with like psychic powers and whatnot, but. It's the sequel, Mummy's Hand, that not a lot of people know about, but it's a really, really good sequel. It's about a cult. It's it's not Imhotep anymore. They had to rework the canon a little bit. Now it's a priest called Karis. Okay. And his priest, what his uh, princess was Anaka. There is a cult that dug him up after he was mummified alive, and they think his punishment shouldn't ever end. So they didn't let him die. They feed him enough leaves to keep him about an inch from death, still mummified, still in pain, but he's been like that for 3,000 years, and the cult has passed it down from generation to generation. The movie starts off with them, the guy's dying, but he's passing the amulet to his son saying, you got to keep this motherfucker like alive, and if anyone comes to this tomb you wake up the mummy to kill them. So the mummy is like a slave that has to carry out this curse, and he's never allowed rest. But when the mummy's killing people, back in the day there wasn't CGI, they individually pulled the frames with the mummy and blacked out the eyes to make it look like his eyes were just eaten away. So when you that make an amazing movie now. Well, the thing is, they took that and the original 1932 and kind of stuck them together and that's what became the Brennan Fraser mummy because there are some archaeologists and people that aren't that try to dig up the tomb and it very much is like Brennan Fraser the brother the um, okay. Rachel Wise so I really feel like they took these two movies and squeezed them together put some more action and made it the mummy 1997 okay definitely check that out Slashaholics uh, I'm gonna have to do that too yeah, M- Mummy's Hand is the first sequel to the original. The The sequels after that aren't that great, but that one's pretty good. Okay, cool. Is there any, like, Mummy meets the Wolfman or anything? Surprisingly, no. The, the Wolfman, Frankenstein, and Dracula, they all kind of intertwined with each other. Mummy didn't. Mummy was, there were five Mummy movies, and then there was Abbott and Costello meet the Mummy. Okay. And there was nothing for almost 40 years until the Brennan Fraser one. Okay. Because the the Mummy remake that was done by Hammer Productions was done in England with Christopher Lee, which is a remake of 
the first one, but it's done by a different studio. It's not the Universal, so it's not a Universal Mummy movie. Okay. Well, this has been a great discussion, as always. Uh, new Come little... to me for more Mummy knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be obsessed with that shit when I was a That's kid. your Mummy. Um, my, my little boy used to have this online friend he played Minecraft with, whose screen name was Who's Your Mummy? And this is when my son was about seven, eight years old. And I was real adamant about my son not giving out or getting real names from his online friends that young. But like every night, all I would hear was, who's your mommy? Who's your mommy? Who's your mommy? Where are you? Where's, where are you at? Who's your mommy? Who's your mommy? Who's your mommy? And finally, it's like, okay, okay. What's his name? It's okay. You can call him his name. I give you permission. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> uh, little segment before we go. I'm in the process of trying to make my hair look as luxurious as Sean's there, I've never grown it out in my life, so this is going to be a, a, a see how it goes as it goes. But uh, I'll give you all the first look at it here. It's getting it's getting a little lengthy here, so let's see. Can you see that? So as gotta, it, gotta, I'll give you guys an update. You got you got to make a commitment. I said no haircuts for 2021, and look what happened. So make a, make a commitment. No haircuts until the end of 2022 and see what happens. That's what we're going to do. We're going to let it grow. I am going to keep this trim. Although, I had to trim myself. Go ahead. There is a, not a catch, but see, to, like, to get it the way I wanted, like, I mean, I started out with buzzed on the back and buzzed on the side, so it got it the way I wanted it to. But um, if you are trying to grow it out, I don't think it's a cop-out to get a trim to get it looking better long. As long as the most of it's long. You know what I mean? Like, there's no point in having, like, a year's worth of hair if it's just, like, you look like Toad from Mario Kart. Like, I mean, that's just not going to make anybody happy, but. Yeah, I don't want to look like Donald Trump's penis, so uh, we'll. uh... Facebook jail. Dude, somebody really came out and said that he, when that rumor started, he called her, one of his aides, and said he apologized uh, and assured her that his dick did not look like Toad from Mario. And she's like, okay, thanks for letting me know that, I guess. Like, I didn't care. But, uh, yeah, back in Facebook jail for me. Um, But, yeah, I'll try that. So, like, pretty much keep the top and shave everything here and on the back and on the side. That That way I can actually, like, I got all of this to play with so I can, like, stick it back and actually like keep it up in the back that's what you're saying though like i just keep the top here and buzz everything else i mean if you want it to grow down like this that's how i did it yeah that's how i wanted to go so i can like ponytail the shit and stuff and see how it looks um, yeah i'm going i'm going full hippie although i, I have a, i still have an anger problem so i'm very angry hippie but i'm working on it i, I had to shave trim this up the other night i had it like down to here I was like, yeah, no, let's let's trim that up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, thank- I also was like, what? You say you trimmed it up? Oh yeah, I just trimmed it up. That's all. See, I tried growing this out. This is a year, man. Nothing. I can't. Nothing quit. at all. It's just I'll, like this and this, and that, that's all I got. I'll get it down here, but up here it's all patchy and stuff. So I just do the goatee. I can get it down, like grab it, you know, but. I was thinking Joe Dirt, where he's like, you don't shave it off? No, nah, man, it just grows in right here, right here. Are you telling me you are so ingrained with white trash DNA that your hair, facial hair actually grows in all white trash? you like that? Yeah, I don't know what you're saying, but yeah, that's what's going, that's what's going on. <laughs> Joe Dirt, too, is also good, in my opinion. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get past the first 10 minutes. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, sorry it's been a while. Hopefully we'll be back sooner. The holidays are coming up. I don't know how that's going to uh, make it work, but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, I know we're hoping to do Death Moon for our next Out of Print Slashers podcast. If we can't get a hold of the author, I want to keep putting on the back burner until we do. Uh, we'll come up with something to talk about on the next one. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'll have to look through the list and see which ones we haven't done yet. Okay, like there's some Friday the 13th and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street novelizations we haven't done, but uh, Final Destination maybe even. Uh, 
yeah, we'll be back very soon, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel here on Patreon. Hope you enjoy the free ebooks I dropped recently. Be sure to vote on the poll to see what the next exclusive uh, early access Patreon narrations will be. Your choices are Ghostbusters, the novelization Gremlins 2, and uh, Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror, Fatal Games. It's pretty neck and neck right now. And also, if you want to voice a character in an upcoming book, Final Destination, Destination Zero, or whatever book wins the poll I mentioned here on Patreon, be sure to let me know that too. You just need to be a $10 tier patron or higher, and we'll get you on there. Um, yeah, I cannot do this channel without you, so I love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for your donations every month. Uh, be excellent to each other, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Sean. It's been fun. Thanks, man.